You know, I sometimes wonder, how did World War II break out in this country, you know? It's, you know, it's, it's usually like the subtle things that usually give me keys onto figuring out how that sort of happened. And it's sort of, I don't know, I sort of base things on face value and how people communicate here. And, you know, it's funny. Um, I think my little brushes with racism here are kind of interesting. Like, I remember I, I was teaching English, you know, I'm a part-time English teacher, and I was teaching English part-time, and we have all these conversation topics just to bring up and talk about. And the conversation was... There's like two, two different conversations. One of them was, if you... I don't know, if you were going to go to school somewhere, which school would you go to? And you had to, like, decide which kind of school you want to go to. And, like, the number one thing that they said, we want to go to a school with no foreigners. <laughs> and, and, like, not only that, the next question was, is, uh, where would you like to live? You know, where's a good place you'd like to live? And I sort of got the same question from a different group of people. They said, we'd like to live somewhere where there are no foreigners. Like, aren't you kind of defeating the purpose of learning English? You know, you want to live somewhere where there's no foreigners and go to school where there's no foreigners? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, the Dalai Lama once said that... He, the Dalai Lama came to Japan, I think, recently, and he just said, the Japanese need to learn more English and get out of their country more. So it's not just me. It's the Dalai Lama who says, you guys need to, like, get out of these cocoons that you're in here. I don't know. I mean, just sometimes I feel like some of the people here, they just, they don't care about what's going on in the rest of the world. I feel like, okay, maybe I fall guilty to this too, because I don't, I don't know, I'm not always following what's going on in Europe all the time. But, I don't know. I just find my brushes with racism here interesting. Like, another example, I don't know, like, especially when you, you get, like, gramps. You get gramps and, uh, what is it, like, Starbucks or McDonald's or 7-Eleven, like these American chains that are here in Japan, and they give you like the stink face, like they're just immensely bothered by your presence. You know, it's funny because don't you just, I don't know why they don't, I guess they just don't see the irony in here. I mean, a friend of mine was pointing this out, Norm, he was, Norman, he was saying that, you know, it's like, is this a lot ironic that I'm receiving racism inside an American establishment? <laughs> but I can't say this. Tokyo is a great place. I mean, there's sometimes, there's places here in Tokyo which I'd say, if this were New York or L.A., I don't know, if I left something somewhere, it'd be gone. What happened was, is I was on this train, the Mononochi Zen, as you see a picture here, and I had a tripod I borrowed from the school. I left the tripod on the racks up there, one of the racks, and I left it there. And, I, and this is the number one tip for you filmmakers out there, is when you're tired, always, 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 always remember if you put your stuff up on the racks, because, I don't know, it's so easy to lose this stuff. But the incredible part of the story, though, is I got the stuff back. Japanese people who helped me find it were incredibly nice. Went out of their way to help me find it. So, I don't know. Maybe the racism sort of balances itself out sometimes.